Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kate, or I go by Always More Sims here on YouTube, and today we are doing a Sims 4 speed build. I don't do these a lot because I never like how they turn out. I am always very frustrated um, with how they normally end up looking, and like I, I see speed builds of, you know, like Lil Simsy and other people doing like awesome things with the houses and like something doesn't work and they immediately know how to fix it and then I do it and I'm like, what have I done wrong? <laughs> what, what am I not doing correctly? Um, I don't know how to fix this. I don't know really even really where to look to know how to fix this. So I typically shy away from building in The Sims 4. I'm just a lot more comfortable building in The Sims 3. I like how things look in The Sims 3, but then there's times that I build stuff in The Sims 3 and I'm like, oh, but I could have done this. If I, like, if I did it in The Sims 4, I would have been able to do this with it or I would have been able to do that with it um, because of just like the different building mechanics that are a possibility in The Sims 4. Um, but anyway, so this house is called Basil Bungalow. I built this house like a month and a half ago. I don't remember anything about it. Um, well, maybe not a month and a half ago. I think I... You know what? I'm just going to look. When did I build this? <laughs> um, no, I'm pretty accurate about a month and a half ago. I built it on March 13th. So, I don't think Growing Together was out yet. I think we might. It was like the day before the infant update or something. Maybe. I could be wrong. Um, I just remember really struggling with this front part of the house. <laughs> I didn't know what to do here. I was kind of all over the place. Um, I'm trying to place things that aren't wanting to place. I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember what I ended up going with. I just know that this has been sitting on the computer for a while and I was like, I should post this at some point because I recorded it. I'm not just gonna, you know, have gone through the pain of building this house not to record it. Do I like this house? No. Do I like the houses that I typically post on the gallery that I make? No. We're doing it anyways. Um, I think I normally make notes. Oh, that's not the notebook I want. I normally make note of like what packs I use when I build houses in The Sims 4, the very few times that I do that. Um, I... Ah, I did, okay. So I guess I... So I used Get Famous, Parenthood, get together and the everyday clutter kit in the bathroom however I feel like when I was looking at it on the gallery which this has not been uploaded to the gallery just yet um I will eventually upload it to the gallery I just have not done so um I feel like it was saying that I used more packs than I consciously remember using uh like I think I went through I was like okay I'm only using these packs but somewhere you know one or two items from a different pack uh, slipped in. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I also, once again, I don't know really what to talk about. Um, I mean, I have things that I could talk about, but at the same time, it's not stuff that I talk about on my channel. So I feel like I'd have to go through like a crap ton of like, backstory information so I just yeah um let's see uh, I have finals this week and then summer break um oh hello Hudson it has been extremely hot over the last like two days it has gotten very warm and uh we have not like we haven't turned on the AC until like two hours ago and we turned the AC on because the dogs were hot. <laughs> Not because, you know, myself and my parents were hot. No, it's because the dogs were miserable. Um, it is 
been very hot. My room for the last two days has been like 84 degrees. And don't get me wrong, I am the kind of person that I love being warm. I hate being cold. I don't handle cold very well. Um, so I, I was, you know, normally I'd think, oh, that's fine. But no, it was so muggy and humid. And the wind typically blows out of the west. Well, my windows face the east. So I was not getting any breeze in my room. I had the windows open and I don't know if that was making it worse. <laughs> that was really helping my situation at all. Um, so yeah, I, I am running, um, summer camp again this year. I ran the, like my local animal shelter where I get like my foster puppies from. It's where Hudson's from. Um, I ran their shelter, like the, I went, not their shelter camp. I mean, it, it's in the shelter, but their summer camp, I ran that last year and I have been put in charge of running it again this year. Uh, so we're doing that. That's going to be all the month of June. I am having surgery on my jaw on June 8th. So in like a month, uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Right, Chloe? Chloe? Right? Yeah. Um, I, I, maybe that's what I can talk about. I don't think I, I've talked a whole lot about it. I know I've probably mentioned it in the past, especially when I had braces a few years ago. I'm sure I talked about it. Um, I cannot chew on the left side of my mouth. I know I could when I was younger, but at one point I just, like, I, I, so whenever I would lose teeth, depending on what side of my mouth, it, like, I lost the tooth on, would determine, like, which side of my mouth I ate on. So if I lost a tooth on the right side, I only ate on the left side. If I lost a tooth on the left side, I only ate on the right side. Well, I didn't actually end up losing my last tooth until like the end of elementary school and I actually had to have it pulled because a chunk of it came out and left like a bunch of shattered little pieces of the rest of the tooth in my mouth um and this was on the left side and the left side became very uncomfortable to eat on and it had been for a while so like by that point I already hadn't been eating on the left side of my mouth for a, a couple years and it's like I would, I would go to the, I would go to the dentist and they would tell me, they would you know, well, it's because you don't take care of your teeth. Um, you don't brush well enough. You don't do this. You don't do that. And like, I was always blamed for my left side being so uncomfortable. And then a couple years ago, I so I got my braces off in January of 2020, right before the world shut down, I feel like. And like that I want to say like the next month I had a like we went we started going to a new dentist and this like the hygienist that I was seeing was like well this is like so weird and like for once I wasn't being blamed for the reason why my mouth is like so screwed up on the left side and it turns out like if you run your tongue along the the roof of your mouth like along that like bridge up top Right above your teeth on both sides, there's, like, a little bone before it, like, smooths up into, you know, the, the arch of your mouth. Well, on my left side, there's, like, a solid, like, inch of bone. Like, it, like, juts out. And then it, like, rises up into the arch. And, like, that extra inch of bone is not supposed to be there. <laughs> it is very uncomfortable. But my gum line on the left side is very close to the tops of my teeth. So whenever I try to eat on that side, it's extremely uncomfortable. It feels like I'm just like mashing my food with my gums. They get incredibly tender, incredibly sore, very fast. And it's just all around not a pleasant experience. So uh, sh this hygienist you know, brought the dentist in. The dentist, like, was like, oh, yeah, this is so weird. We need to, like, something needs to be done about this, but we cannot do anything about it, so we're going to refer you to something called a periodontist. And I don't even know exactly what a periodontist is. I just know that it's not a regular dentist. It's not an orthodontist. There's part dinosaur or something. And 
the nearest office is like a two and a half hour drive away. So, uh, last March, my dad went with me to see this periodontist guy, uh, two and a half hours away. And he looked at, you know, well, okay. So actually we'll back up first. I went to a local oral surgeon, you know, like, so somebody that does stuff with wisdom teeth and teeth removal, stuff like that. And cause they weren't sure at first if like I hadn't had my wisdom teeth pulled yet. So their thought process was maybe it's possible that if I get my wisdom teeth pulled, the gum line will kind of go down. That maybe the gum line was rising so close to the tops of my teeth because of the wisdom teeth. Because uh, gum follows bone and like the bone was rising because of the wisdom teeth. And so they're like, maybe if we take the wisdom teeth out, then you'll be able to like that gum will like sink down into the hole that the wisdom teeth were sitting in and it'll bring your gum line down and it'll make everything a little more tolerable. That did jack squat. That did nothing. Um, because I got my wisdom teeth pulled last June. Um, I can't believe it's always already been almost a year since that. <laughs> I feel like it was just like a couple weeks ago. So go to the periodontist. He kind of comes to the same conclusion. And his hope was actually that I'd be able to have my wisdom teeth and this one surgery at the same time. However, he's like, well, we don't have the instruments to pull your wisdom teeth. That's not what we specialize in. We'd have to like figure something else out, possibly go to a different place to do this. Yada, yada, yada. I'm like, of course, can't be, can't be anything simple. No, no, no. Can't, can't have that. So we end up going with, it was going to be this jaw surgery that I'm having here in a month and the wisdom teeth at the same time because it was going to be on the same side of my mouth. That may, I wouldn't have to go through two surgeries. Well, that didn't end up happening. So I got my wisdom teeth out. A couple months went by. I go to the dentist every three months, three to four months, um, just to have my teeth cleaned because on that side of my mouth, it is just like the plaque builds so fast because uh, I'm not eating on it and when you eat, actually when you eat that kind of helps remove like maybe s foods that are stuck in your teeth or stuff that might have settled on your teeth like that movement helps loosen anything that might have gotten stuck well since I, I don't really eat on the left side of my mouth plaque builds really fast and it can be very uncomfortable to brush too hard or for too long now that doesn't mean that I don't because I kind of have to but it's still very uncomfortable. So I have to go in every three to four months just for a regular like cleaning. So I go to, I go in for this cleaning and I tell them like, well, this is what's happened. Nothing's really changed. I still can't eat on that side of my mouth. The, um, and the oral surgeon was supposed to take like a certain kind of x-ray and send it to the periodontist. Um, and that was actually supposed to tell us right then if I would even need this surgery, the second surgery, because it was supposed to show if it was the whiz, like if the wisdom teeth were what was pushing the bone up or if it was something else. Well, this oral specialist didn't end up sending the x-rays to the periodontist, um, didn't even bother kind of looking at any of that. His primary concern was only the wisdom teeth and he didn't really seem that interested in finding out if it was something else, he was, it's wisdom teeth. It's got to be wisdom teeth. It's just, he was dead set that it only could be wisdom teeth. So I get the wisdom teeth pulled and nothing happens. And the periodontists now don't have my x-rays and it's a whole mess. So I end up going back to the periodontist. It was, it was this past March, maybe it was February, end of February, beginning of March of this year. Um, and I see the periodontist again and he's like, well, I guess nothing really happened. I'm like, nope. And that was the same conclusion that the oral hygienist that cleans my teeth every time. That's kind of the same conclusion that we came to is that nothing really happened. That the, again, the wisdom teeth removal didn't really help any. Like it's, it's a good thing I got them out, but it did not aid in the overall goal of doing that. So they were like, well, 
I guess we're going to go ahead and go forward with, the, you know, the surgery. And we had discussed the surgery the time, that, that first time I went, but the periodontist was hoping that if the oral specialist got back to him about what, like, about the x-rays that we'd be able to then determine, and then hopefully it would just be the wisdom teeth that was causing the discomfort, and, well, that, that was not the case. So now I get to have the bone of my jaw sanded down, uh, which sounds very unpleasant. I am not looking forward to it. I had a really bad reaction to having my wisdom teeth pulled. Um, I apparently processed the laughing gas that they gave me. Like, I, it, I went through it very quickly. Um, the oral specialist's assistant uh, told me that they had given me as high of an amount as they could, like, based off, like, my weight and my age and all that stuff. Like, they could only give me so much, and they'd given me all that they could. But I was still very... <clears throat> I was still very coherent and aware um, while I was having my wisdom teeth pulled. I could feel the wisdom teeth. Like, I could feel, like, this really immense pressure and, like, even some pain. And when I had gone in for the consultation, he had told me that if I could tell, if I could say easily, like, understandably, eeny, meeny, miny, mo," that he would give me more drugs... <laughs> Like, so I wouldn't be as coherent. And I looked him right in the eyes. And I remember going, eeny, meeny, miny, but like, it was a little jumbled because, like, my mouth was, like, I, my tongue was numb and all. So I was like, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. But, like, I still said it. And he still continued just going on. I'm like, okay. So, like, my legs were shaking. Um, like, I was, like, crying. I was a, not a good experience. So it makes me very nervous for this experience in a month. Um, I'm supposed to be getting put, like, all the way under. I'm not supposed to be, um, with it at all. I'm not supposed to be aware. I'm supposed to be completely unconscious for this. I'm hoping it works. I've been scarred now. Um, but I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see how that works. I would like to be able to chew on both sides of my mouth again, because uh, it really sucks if I, like, eat something hot, and then I burn the gum line, like, right above the teeth on my right side, um, because I can't just switch to the left side of my mouth to chew. I have to keep chewing on the right side, and that just irritates it, and then, like, I start having problems with the right side, and it's just, ugh, it's a whole mess. It is so bad. <laughs> um, like, at one point, the I've had gum removed on my left side twice. The first time was before my braces so they could actually put the braces on. And the second time was while I had braces because the gum line grew up and over the brackets. It was literally one of the most painful experiences in my life. The gum growing over the brackets. It was, oh, it was so awful. And then I went into the um, orthodontist and one of the like hygienists there was all nasty and she was like well you've got food stuck in here you need to brush better I'm like I I didn't so I guess that like the food getting like under the bracket like between the bracket and the tooth somehow irritated the gum enough that the gum was like I'm gonna grow over the bracket and the piece of food caught there and it was oh, it was so bad but it looks like we're coming to an end I don't have screenshots for this house I know I took them but I have no idea where they went so I guess I need to wrap this up here thank you guys so much for watching this will be on the gallery same origin id whatever as my username see you there bye